Welcome to the video homework for topic 6.14 having to do with reactions of amides and nitriles. Before you attempt the problems in this homework, I would recommend that you read the lesson 6.14 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer 2018 by Professors Tennyson, Hujiri, and Smith. And our first problem asks about the major product of this reaction. And we first have to identify what the reactive pieces of this equation are. We can see that there's a nucleophilic set of hydrides on this lithium aluminum hydride, and there is an electrophilic carbon with a partial positive charge as part of this amide unit. And in the primer we saw that what we will have is addition of these nucleophilic hydrides to the carbon, and eventually this oxygen will leave as a salt. So the net result is you've replaced both of these bonds in the CO double bond. The second problem is asking you for the major product of reaction between the cyano group and aqueous acid. It helps if you draw out the cyano group as the CN triple bond, and that helps you to identify the electrophilic nature of that carbon because that bond is really quite polar. And it's a complicated mechanism, but in the primer you're shown all the steps, and you'll get conversion of the nitrile group to a carboxylic acid group where this carbon is the same carbon that you had here. You'll also notice in this case that since we started with a chiral center at this position here, and we didn't do any reactions on that center, you will have one single isomer where that stereochemistry is retained. The more challenging types of problems are not simply asking you for major products of single steps, but a lot of times you're asked to devise a multi-step synthesis of a molecule. If we take a closer look at what pieces are missing, in the product and what pieces we've added, we can see that we're going to have to remove the oxygens from that carbonyl carbon. We're going to be replacing those two bonds with bonds to hydrogens and bond to nitrogen. So there are three new bonds we have to make and three bonds we have to get rid of to accomplish that. And it's helpful to be able to track the fact that those bonds are changing at this carbon. So this is the same carbon in the product as we have in the reactant. And now we have to think carefully about how are we going to add and remove these pieces. And we do this by thinking in the backwards direction. We use this retrosynthetic arrow. So in this case, you say, I can make this compound from this species using this route. So if we were thinking in the traditional normal direction, we would think, here's this amide. We react it with lithium aluminum hydride, and that will give us addition of the two H's, just like in the first problem of this homework set. So we could get that last step to take place, and that would accomplish removing the O, maybe tracking through to the starting material, and replacing it with two H's. But at that point we haven't put the NH2 group on. We still have to figure out some step that will accomplish that before we can even get to this point in our sequence. And we know we can't make it directly from the carboxylic acid, because if you react the carboxylic acid with and amine, you're just going to deprotonate that. We first need to have a good leaving group here instead of this acidic group. So we can think about converting an acid chloride unit to an amide unit by using ammonia in this case. At that point, all that's left for us to do is to figure out how we would undertake this step. So we might say, well, an acid chloride can be made from a carboxylic acid by using thionyl chloride. And we can convert that to how we usually see reactions in our introductory organic courses. We can take the carboxylic acid, convert it to the acid chloride by using thionyl chloride, convert that acid chloride into the amide using ammonia, and then we can do the reduction of the amide to the amine by adding those two H's. And you could draw this all as one reaction arrow in drawing all those four steps consecutively. Again, we do have two chiral centers in the molecule, but we didn't change any of the bonds to those carbons, so both of those original stereo centers should be retained in the product. And now here's one of these kind of intimidating looking exam problems where you have six steps and you're asked to find the major product that happens as a result of all six of these steps. And you want to break this down and carefully think this through one step at a time. This first step, for example, shown in blue, that is a nitration, which is one of the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Nitration is an ortho para director. It puts a nitro group onto a benzene ring. And we have a benzene ring here. 
So we would expect to place the next substituent ortho or para to that t-butyl group. Those are the ortho positions and that being the para. But remember that the t-butyl group is very sterically encumbering and it kind of hinders you from adding to the ortho position. So our most likely major product of the first step will be addition of a nitro group to the para position. So after completing just step one, we would expect to have this product. And now we look at the second step and say, okay, now we have a nitro group on the ring. What kind of reaction is mediated by tin and hydrochloric acid? And see that this is a reaction that reduces an NO2 to an NH2 group. So after the second step, we should have changed the nitro to an NH2. And hopefully you'll recognize that steps three and four together comprise the diazonium reaction, where the step three makes that NH2 into the diazonium leaving group, and step four replaces that diazonium leaving group with a CN group. And if you're using CN, one of these copper salts specifically, that's a Sandmeyer reaction. All right, so after the diazonium replacement, we have this cyano group here, this nitrile substituent, and we move on to steps five and six. Well, steps five and six together, first add two nucleophilic H's to the electrophilic carbon of the CN, that's this one with a partial plus to attract those H minus units, the hydrides towards them. And the second step is just to provide the protons necessary after those steps. So you replaced the two pi bonds with now sigma bonds to H's, the nitrogen got protonated, and now you have your final product after all six steps. And here's another example of a multi-step synthesis problem. And here our first step is to add magnesium in diethyl ether. And that you should recognize as an oxidative addition to the carbon bromide bond to form a Grignard reagent. So the second step is going to provide an electrophile to react with that nucleophile. And specifically the nucleophilic addition of the Grignard to this aldehyde. You could draw it like that, followed by protonation of this oxygen by the water. That's a carbonyl reaction type A that we've seen in the primer. And we'll get a racemic mixture of now this secondary alcohol, because this is a chiral center generated from a chiral starting material. Once we have completed steps one and two, we have this species. And now we're going to do step three, which is PCC. That stands for pyridinium chlorochromate. And that's an oxidizing agent. And in this case, you generate this ketone from the secondary alcohol. Step four is an amine in the presence of some acid catalyst, and that's how you make imines. I've drawn it in this one particular isomer with a larger group coming off of the nitrogen. It's by the small ethyl instead of the big benzylic group, so that's the proper isomer. You'll want to be careful about that. And then this last step, the lithium aluminum hydride, is of course utilized as a source of nucleophilic H's, which will be able to attack in a nucleophilic addition step to the polar pi bond. In this case, it's between a carbon and a nitrogen. And then the step where you have the water, that's what places the proton on that nitrogen. This is another type A reaction for carbonyls in the primer. And since you've generated a chiral center when you did that reduction, you'll have a racemic mixture as your final product. There are a couple relatively common types of synthetic applications involving the reactions we've seen in this lesson, so I want to go over a couple of those. This problem tells you this is an example of reductive amination. It's asking you to provide products of this multi-step synthesis. Well, here it's only two steps. And your first step is to react a ketone with an amine. And this is a primary amine, so you would expect to make an imine, as we saw in the previous problem. At that point, we've used this ethylamine unit to place this piece onto the imine. And now we have this interesting reagent. Now we've seen sodium borohydride, and here's another example of nucleophilic hydrides on a boron. So when you see that reagent, I hope that you'll recognize that will react very similarly to sodium borohydride. And the sodium borohydride, or in this case the cyano derivative of that, will produce nucleophilic H's to attack a polar carbon-nitrogen bond. We saw lithium aluminum hydride undertake the same reaction with an imine in the previous problem. Once you've generated that species and you have a chiral center here, so it's a racemic mixture, you have done what is called reductive amination because you added an amine and you reduced the compound. Another somewhat more complicated synthetic strategy involving reactions we've seen in this lesson is known as the Strecker synthesis of amino acids, and it's quite an important uh, process for 
preparing amino acids. So let's try to figure out what the major product is of this sequence. Well, the first step involves this reagent. Now, this reagent can be thought of as ammonia plus catalytic acid. The ammonia and the acid would go together to make an ammonium, and of course, those species are in equilibrium in solution. And we know that ammonia in the presence of acid can react with a ketone to make an imine. Now, in the same reaction mixture, we have this sodium cyanide, and you have this Cn minus nucleophile, which will be able to add to the imine bond. It's a nucleophilic addition step. Uh, the second H will come from some of the acid that's in the solution. And you've generated a chiral center. This chiral center stays the same, so you generate a mixture of two diastereomers. And all of that happens as part of step one. Once we've generated this nitrile, and in step two we expose this to aqueous acid, bringing it to a pH of seven, we will do hydrolysis of this nitrile unit to a carboxylic acid. Now the pH is important here. At a pH of seven, of course, a carboxylic acid will be deprotonated and an amine will be protonated. So in the end, we have a mixture of R and S isomers at this center. We didn't do any chemistry at this stereo center, so that is retained. So we have a mixture of two diastereomers. And this particular amino acid, having this R group over here, is called isoleucine.